Hi friends, I'm Dustin. If you've been here before, great. And thanks for watching. Now let me answer some questions you might have. Who in the are you? Great question, but you didn't have to be so mean. I'm Dustin Fife, and I am an assistant professor at Rowan University in Glassboro, New Jersey. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. And I am also a quantitative psychologist. What's a quantitative psychologist? It's what happens when a statistician and a psychologist mate. You get quantitative psychologist babies. So that's what I am, a quantitative psychologist. We do statistics, but with people numbers. People numbers? What do quantitative psychologists do? Well, for one, we make YouTube videos. Actually, I'm one of the few who actually makes YouTube videos, so yeah. Most quantitative psychologists end up working for testing companies like GRE and GMAT and Pearson and that sort of thing. Remember the horror of taking the GREs or the SATs or the GMAT? Yeah, my kind do that. I hope you're kidding me. It's not something I'm proud of. The rest of us quantitative psychologists end up in psychology departments like me, or they make bajillions of dollars working for like Google or Aflac, or they decide to open up a hot dog stand and use statistics like a boss. Really though, I'm much more of a statistician than I am a psychologist. And what is your expertise, Mr. Expert? I'm so glad you cared to ask. Who says I care? I have two areas of expertise, actually. Cause I couldn't be expert in just one, y'all. I don't think you're as smart as you think you are. First is missing data. Let's say you got a new exercise program and you want to show that it improves life satisfaction or something. So you gather 100 people, randomly assign 50 to your exercise condition and 50 to a control condition. And then after six weeks, you measure their life satisfaction. But guess what? Half the people dropped out before the end of the study. That right there is a missing data problem. So one branch of my research tries to figure out what we can do to recover that missing information. And my second area of expertise, developing tools for learning and using statistics. So I have developed Flexplot, which makes it super easy to visualize statistical models. I've also created a data simulator, which teachers and students can use to practice on fake data sets. I've created the maximized DV calculator, the selection package, quantitative lit reviews, and many more to come. Basically, I'm a psychologist, a statistician, and a bit of a computer programmer too. Who'd have thought? Well, bless your heart. And who is this channel for? That is an excellent question, my friend. And it's actually a question that I've struggled to answer myself. Why? Well, let me tell you a little story. Three years ago, I was driving to work on my way to teach another statistics class. I had taught that same class so many times, I had it memorized. And honestly, I was bored of hearing myself say the same thing over and over and over again. So I thought to myself, self, wouldn't it be nice if I just recorded my lecture? Then I never have to say the same thing again. And so I did, and I posted them on YouTube. And now I spend all of my class time practicing with my students. So that's how this channel came to be. So what is my channel about? Here's what I've concluded. Primarily, my channel is a resource for my students. That's how it began and that's how it will continue. And that explains why some of my content seemed a little haphazard at times. Cause I realized, oh, all my students misunderstand this one thing so I need to create a video or ooh I'm developing the new course curriculum I need to create videos for that so my students at Rowan are my primary audience secondarily this YouTube channel is for other people's students that's probably you hi thanks for joining us so many of you are graduate or undergraduate students learning statistics for the first time or even like the hundredth time yeah the way people teach statistics sucks Welcome to my channel, where things don't suck. So thanks for joining me. Gather around, my little flock. Join us on a statistical journey. But while you're on the ride, don't gripe about my YouTube videos. I find your jokes offensive and distracting. Y'all, man, you should really vary up your presentation or something. Your content doesn't suit me. Change it. Tailor to my whims. This ain't my day job, people. I ain't getting paid for this. I'm doing this for free. I do it when I want, how I want. And of course, I'm open to your feedback. I love feedback. But don't demand that I tailor to your whims. I 
ain't your private tutor? If you don't like my style, find some other videos to watch. There's lots of them out there. And by the way, I still love you. You just drive me crazy sometimes. Rant over. What is the purpose of this channel? Primarily, the purpose is to teach my students, but also to promote sound statistical practices. Did you know we're in the midst of a replication crisis? And that crisis was caused by bad data practices. And by the way, the curriculum for statistics hasn't changed in 50 years. I'm afraid he's right. Are you kidding me? We've been doing the same thing for 50 years? I don't teach the old standard curriculum. The old curriculum is broken. My curriculum is very, very different. It's heavy on visualizations. I structure things with the GLM approach. So rather than t-tests, ANOVAs, regressions, chi-squares, everything is the general linear model. And I am anti-p-value. It's about time someone teaches something proper. And by the way, if it hasn't become clear, I'm a bit of a research evangelist. My way is better. My way should be the new standard. And so I will shout it from my YouTube channel and say, hey, this is the way we need to be doing statistics, people. Join me. So that's one purpose, to promote sound data practices. Another purpose is to show you ways to make your life easier. I make videos so you don't have to read boring textbooks. Well, thank you, sir. And I also write textbooks so you don't have to read boring textbooks. Or at least, a textbook is coming soon. I also make web apps and software to simplify the analysis process. So I'm here to make your statistical life easier. And not to mention, knowing statistics makes you infinitely more attractive. Another purpose of my YouTube channel is to make loads of money. Actually, no. My channel's not monetized and probably will never be. I just hate YouTube ads. No, I don't need a state farm insurance policy, thank you very much. And if I did, your stupid YouTube ad wouldn't convince me. But more importantly, the moment a company starts paying you, it becomes a slippery slope and I value my integrity. And finally, I am paid by taxpayer money because I work at a public institution. You shouldn't have to pay twice for my tutelage. Speaking of which, another purpose of my channel is to promote open science practices. You see, my home nation, the United States of America, is becoming increasingly anti-science. This is both frustrating and shocking to me, but it's also understandable because it's partially the fault of scientists and it is the fault of greedy stakeholders who have kept valuable scientific information behind paywalls. So is it any wonder that my nation is anti-science when they can't even access the information in the first place? And the only access they have to science comes from second, third, fourth, fifth hand. People who don't even understand the science. And so the message gets overly compressed and overly simplified and people just get upset because things flip flop, things change. But I think open science is the solution. There is a new generation of scientists that is emerging. These scientists value openness and transparency, skepticism and humility, an open dialogue with the public and dissemination. See the link in the description about my grassroots values video. So here I am, I'm here to promote that. I very firmly believe in open science and I think everybody should have access to open science information. Which is why I am here to give it freely to you. What can I expect in the future? Again, my primary goal is to teach my own students. So I will be updating old videos, adding new videos that cover tricky areas, but I also expect to do other things like app development updates. I've also been thinking about doing science in the media, like have a statistician's reaction to reading a newspaper article. Then I can look up the actual scientific article and make comments about how the media overly compress the message. Or maybe they did a good job, I don't know. Another thing I'm thinking about doing is revisiting analyses. See, in today's day and age, it's very easy for people to upload their data set when they publish an article, which means that there are a wealth of data sets out there freely available. And that's gonna give me a chance to reanalyze their data and see if I come to different conclusions than they did. And along the way, you get to see the process from beginning to end of a statistician analyzing some data. Well, that's a good idea, I think. I've also thought about doing more vlog style videos where I offer my opinion on current events and that sort of thing. So now I turn it to you. What do you vote for? What do you want to hear about? I make no guarantees that I will do it because again, I'm doing this for free. And by the way, this takes a lot of time. It took me an hour just to set up my studio and I am currently at 22 minutes. Yeah, I get to take out a lot of ums and errs and stumbles and blumbles and I should probably take that one out too. Anyway, and then I gotta go and 
edit the thing. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. And I have four kids and a full-time job and more hobbies than I can count. So with that, here's what's coming in the near future. I got a video about writing your first academic paper. I've got videos about how to do basic analyses in JASP. And I've got a couple of videos in character, meaning other characters besides me. Really? Expressing some opinions I've had about open science and about the COVID-19 pandemic, etc. So with that, I hope you will join me in the future. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And give me a digital high five. With that, peace out.